It's mid-morning in September 2013 on the outskirts of Sydney and something's caught the attention of this highway patrol officer. Uh, light traffic, I've got uh, one vehicle in front of The driver being pursued is a disability pensioner and part-time nurse. She's driving well below the speed limit. Yeah, our speed is 70 over uh, 100. The original uh, offence is unregistered. There's... The white Honda's registration has expired and the driver fails to stop. She says she doesn't realise the officer is pursuing her. There was sirens behind me, so I moved to the side to, to let him go through. But the car that had been in front of me didn't move to the side, so I thought that's why the policeman couldn't go through. What happens next will change this woman's life forever. A gun was put to the back of my head and a male voice said, I will shoot you. At this point, she says she feared for her life. And I'm thinking, God, the police have just gone past and and I'm being mugged. And then I turned and realised that it was a, the police officer, or a police officer. The officer disputes he put his gun to her head. He later said his response was justified because he didn't know who was driving the car. We next see him escort her from the garage. He tries to force the woman, who has a spinal injury, to the ground. At this point, the audio from the police dash cam reveals the conversation between Highway Patrol Officer James Hertak and the driver, Litha Alsterer. Sir, the police car's been recording all the way since Picton. All right? You're obligated to stop when there's a police car behind you throwing red flashing lights. I'm sorry. You've intentionally engaged... Shush! Shut up. You've intentionally engaged in a pursuit with a... a, Good. With a police officer. You are now under arrest, okay, for failing to disobey a police direction and failing to stop for using an unregistered motor vehicle. Okay, is the car yours? Her ordeal isn't over yet. You're going to be compliant this time? I was compliant. You're Don't fucking do that. fighting. Well, that's because you're hurting me. Max, Max, baby. He got out his pepper spray and he pepper sprayed the dog and there was nothing I could do to get away from it. If you'd have let me lock him up, I would have been fine. Nah. What? Nah. He hasn't bitten you. All he's trying to do is What's tell you that? that They're bite marks. He bit me. He's lucky if I don't shoot him. Dog is Max. Let me put him away. I told you no. that. He'd lick you to death before he'd do anything else. He's a really passive little thing. Look, I'm sorry. I don't know where you trained, but Australian police stand, don't behave stand like this. Stand up. I can't. I've got spinal injuries. Stand I tried up. to tell you that. Litha pleaded guilty to driving while her car was unregistered and failing to stop when directed by police. The magistrate did not record a conviction and dismissed all charges. Get in the back of the police car. The conduct of Officer Hertak was heavily criticised by the magistrate in her criminal case. The garage can stay open. The police prosecutor defended his actions, suggesting Litha may have been evading police. For Litha, her arrest five years ago has totally consumed her life. Took away my career as a nurse. It took away my home because I couldn't return to it. It's a nightmare that you can't get out of. You don't wake up. Do not try and tell me how to do my job. A spokesman for the New South Wales Police declined to answer 7.30's questions because Litha's civil case against the police is ongoing. There's a video on the ABC website. You may not have had a chance to to look at it, but it's got a picture of a police officer dragging a pensioner to his car. She wasn't threatening him. You're right, unfortunately, I I haven't seen it. Um, But from my perspective, that doesn't define New South Wales Police 
and, and the you know, nearly 17,000 police and the wonderful work that we do across the state. But in that, there needs to be accountability. And, and if we've got that wrong, it should be investigated. Uh, I want to speak to my solicitor. What I number is the address? Officer Hertak declined to answer 730's questions, but said an internal police inquiry and an investigation by the New South Wales Ombudsman did not find fault with his actions. It's total disbelief that the person you're supposed to go to for help is the person you need help because of. This is the, this is the person that you trust who says serve and protect the community. He's the person who's roughing you up, hurting you. Former Ombudsman John McMillan was responsible for handling more than 3,000 complaints about New South Wales Police each year. He saw the best and worst of the New South Wales Police. Police exercise extraordinary powers. They have to deal with highly charged, sensitive, uh, uh, difficult situations. Uh, understandably, um, there are strong allegations that uh, are made uh, against police, and they're serious allegations that can lead to officers being charged or losing their career. There will be a use of excessive force at times. Um, the explanation can vary. Um, it may be uh, an error of judgment. Uh, it, it may be uh, a reflexive response to uh, a difficult problem, but it may also be bad temper and arrogance. Those who exercise uh, special and intrusive powers have a special responsibility to be uh, above reproach. Last year, in another disturbing case, a judge ruled that Jude Costello was unlawfully arrested and imprisoned by police on the New South Wales north coast. The 34-year-old has a physical disability. I have splints on both of my legs and I also have a wheelchair. On the day of her arrest, she'd been arguing with her former partner. The argument became heated and he called police. I was scared he... He's bigger than me. He's stronger than me. Jude and her former partner both made accusations about each other. Jude claimed the officers weren't interested in her version of events. I hadn't done anything. I was innocent and I was being treated like a criminal. And they tried to put handcuffs on me and arrest me. And I kept on saying to them, look, I have a disability. You can't handcuff me. The officers bundled Jude into a police van. They told me, we're effing sick of your shit. Get in. And I said that I couldn't. And um, they grabbed me either side under the arms and pretty much threw me in. It was about 15, 20 minutes down to the police station and I was being thrown about the entire way. I ended up having bruises on my spine and the back of my hips. Jude was put in a cell and forced to sit on the ground. She was charged with larceny, malicious damage and assault charges that were all later withdrawn. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. They shouldn't have arrested me and I should not should not have been charged. The New South Wales Police didn't provide answers to 730's questions about this case either. So are police getting the training that they need to deal with vulnerable people? Look, look, absolutely we are. We come into contact with millions of people every year. We put over 200,000 people through the justice system. And if you look at the percentages of complaints, the percentages of matters where we're criticised, they are minimal. Former Ombudsman John McMillan is worried there may not be enough resources for independent investigations of incidents like these. They're not naturally given 
to uh, to exposing um, faults internally, and so the uh, continuation of rigorous oversight is the key to uh, um, maintaining a professional standard. I felt like a second class citizen. These women are determined to see their complaints through. I felt like it was the right thing to do. I felt like police shouldn't behave in the manner that they conducted themselves. When Jude Costello sued the New South Wales police, it was a resounding win. She was awarded $70,000 in damages and the judge delivered a scathing assessment of the officer's conduct. The judge found the, the police massaged the truth. The judge came to the conclusion that I was most unequivocally a victim. Litha Alstra is still waiting for a judge to hand down his decision in her civil case. Now you see police officers and you don't think serve and protect. You think beware. <laughs>